Hello everybody and thank you for tuning into this video on how you can improve food quality using advanced microbial profiling, which I'm now going to call AMP for the rest of this video. Um, okay, so who am I? My name is Greg Jones and I am a microbiologist here at Camden BRI. And my job on a daily basis is to look at how microbes grow in food, whether or not that is from the point of view of spoilage or if it's from the point of view of pathogenic organisms. Today we're going to focus on the spoilage side of things. Now, when I do my job day to day, what I'm essentially doing is making a series of choices and introducing a series of biases into the analysis. I make choices by looking at various different groups of microorganisms and I choose those organisms based on my experience with food and what I think should be in there. And once I've made those choices, I introduce further biases by choosing which agar I'm going to be growing my organisms on, which media I'm going to be growing them in, and then I introduce another bias by growing those organisms at a certain temperature, and a further bias by choosing what time I'm going to be keeping those organisms in my incubator. All these biases essentially mean that I'm only looking at a subset of the population of my product. There could well be organisms there which we have basically missed because we weren't expecting them to be there. To get around this, we can use a culture-independent method called AMP. And I've just got a little schematic here of how it works. So essentially what we do is we take our food product and we then extract microbial DNA. Once we have extracted that DNA, we can amplify a marker gene within it. And once we have that gene amplified, we can put all those sequences onto a sequencer. And once we've sequenced all those different sequences, we can use some software to compare those sequences against the database of known sequences. And what we essentially get is a list of names and numbers that comes out. So what do we do with that list of names and numbers? Well, let's have a look, first of all, at the sort of data we get from a culture-based uh, culture analysis. So our culture-based results would look something like this. If I was looking at this product, I would have chosen to look for Pseudomonas, Enterobacteriaceae, and Lactic Acid Bacteria. And with that particular sort of analysis, you get the results that come out like this. So we've got 3 times 10 to the 6 colony forming units per gram Pseudomonas. We've got 4 times 10 to the 3 colony forming units per gram Enterobacteriaceae. And we've got 2 times 10 to the 4 colony forming units per gram Lactic Acid Bacteria. And that's the sort of information that one expects from a culture-based analysis. With AMP, we get more information. So here we have the sort of uh, results we get with our sequence-based results. We've got species of Pseudomonas. So there's our Pseudomonas counts, but here we've split those down into species. And we get a number of reads associated with those particular species. What we also find is that we get organisms which we are not expecting. So here we didn't even look for anything like Brocothrix here, so, but here in this particular data set we have Brocothrix thermos factor. We have organisms which are related to Pseudomonas, so here we've got a Chromobacterium violaceum here. And we always find organisms which, you, which we are not expecting in, when we run the, an AMP analysis, uh, which just goes to show that beforehand we were biasing our approach quite a lot. So what do I mean by, uh, what, do I, what do I have to do in order to use this new sort of data? Well, I need to stop, essentially. I need to stop being a microbiologist and turn into an ecologist instead. Because instead of looking at numbers of certain bugs and thinking of them as uh, basically monocultures, I need to start thinking about them as populations, as consortia of different organisms. And I'm going to illustrate that here with my diagram of some fish and my creepy crawlies here. And I can say, OK, well, I've got some fish, I've got some creepy crawlies. If I was to analyze these two populations and find this sort of a situation, like that, that all of a sudden my creepy crawlies had a fish in them, I would be able to tell that there had been some communication between those two populations and that I know, also know the direction of that communication. I can say that fish of one of these populations has moved into this population here. So with AMP, you can start to do that for foods. You can start to say, OK, well, why am I looking at a population I'm not expecting to see in this particular product? Where has that come from? We 
can also use this for spoilage investigations as well. So here we have a diagram for, based on some, uh, some work we did for a client. And in this particular case, what we had was some chicken. It was a, basically a chicken breast in a modified atmosphere packet. And the chicken breast was spoiling. It was going blue. There were some blue patches on the surface of that chicken breast. And the first thought was, well, are these blue patches uh, maybe dyes? Has, that, has there been some leaching of a dye from the packaging into the product? And the, our chemists confirmed that that was not the case. So we got hold of the uh, product and ran a spoilage investigation using AMP. And here's essentially what we found. So we found the normal profile and we found a spoiled profile and we found a different uh, profile to what we were expecting. So the, we found that big green blob on my graph there. Now, when we came to look at what the big green blob was, then we found that it was an organism called Arthrobacter, which is an obligate aerobe, so it requires the presence of oxygen in order to be able to grow. And it is noted for its production of blue pigments, which told us two things. One, it was likely to be the causative agent of the uh, spoilage we saw because it produces pigments. And number two, it shouldn't have been there in the first place because it only grows in the presence of oxygen. And these packs were supposed to be oxygen free. So when the client got that information back, they could make, run an investigation on their packaging line. And lo and behold, they did find a fault with the packaging. It's not just spoilage investigations we can use AMP for. Uh, we can look at factory hygiene. So we can look at whether or not a clean area is in fact a clean area by looking at the population of microbes there compared to other areas of the factory. We can look at fermented products. So we have at the moment the, a, a, a team looking at fermented products and the microbial composition of those products. And these are of particular, um, particular excitement at the moment because there is a lot of interest on uh, fermented products, fermented vegetables, kombuchas, kimchi, all that kind of stuff. Um, we can also use it to look at uh, authenticity as well. So if we imagine we have two types of product, maybe we're looking at two types of Italian hard cheese here. And we have our uh, uh, Parmesan section up here, and we have, oh sorry, maybe a Grana Padano up here, and we have Parmesan down here. And we are looking at a sample which is claiming to be Parmesan, but actually turns out to be Grana Padano. We can look at uh, trying to place those populations in, uh, in, in relation to each other, and to see whether or not a product is as authentic as, uh, as, as people are claiming. So that's really just a short whistle-stop tour through what we can do with, uh, with AMP. So if you have any questions, then uh, there's contact details uh, surrounding this video, no doubt. And uh, please do get in touch and, uh, and give, us a, uh, give us a shout, because it's a fascinating area, and uh, I'd love you to uh, use it. Thank you very much.